In this video, I'm going to help you decode the JC virus antibody test. So if you'd like to better understand what that test is about and how to use it, stay tuned because that starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits. And it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today's topic is the JC virus antibody test. And so let me break it down for you. There is a virus called the JC virus, which stands for John Cunningham virus. And about half of humans over the age of 30 have been exposed and have contracted that virus. Now the virus in and of itself does not hurt the human body. In fact, guys, we have thousands upon thousands of viruses that live inside our bodies and our immune systems beat up on them and we don't really care. There are certain conditions, however, where the JC virus can mutate. It can go into the brain and cause a very serious infection called PML or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. And we have seen this in the setting of several MS therapeutics, most notably in the setting of using a medicine called Tysabri or Natalizumab. So when someone is taking Tysabri or considering taking Tysabri, there's most commonly and there should always be a discussion about the risk of uh, PML. And here are the factors that are involved. Number one, have you previously been exposed to the JC virus? Yes or no? And we can sort that out by checking a JC virus antibody. If the antibody is positive, that means that we have seen the JC virus or we've contracted the JC virus and our immune system has made antibodies against it. So we know we've, we've contracted the virus or not. If your JC virus antibody negative, that means that we haven't come in contact with the virus and our immune system doesn't recognize it and doesn't make antibodies against it. So that's the first thing. If you are JC virus antibody negative, then you can't get the PML infection. That's like saying if you've never come in contact with HIV tainted fluids, then you can't get AIDS. Now the risk of contracting the JC virus, not PML, but the virus, the JC virus, is somewhere between 2.5 and 20 percent, depending on which paper you read. Now there is a test, the JC virus antibody test, that we do every three months in patients treated with Tysabri. And if they're negative and they become positive, it tells us that they've now come in contact with the virus. So that's the first one. Have you been exposed to the virus or not? If you've been exposed to the virus, the second question is have you previously been exposed to immunosuppressant agents like chemotherapy? So these may include pills like Celsep, uh, like methotrexate, like Imuran. They can include infusions like mitoxantrone or cytoxin or Lemtrada. And if you have been exposed to previous immunosuppression, that increases the individual's risk to get PML if they have the JC virus. So JC virus, yes or no? Prior immunosuppression, yes or no? The third uh, factor that we have to consider is how long have you been on Tysabri? And so each year that you're on Tysabri, if you're antibody positive, that risk goes up slightly. And in a second or two, I'm going to show you a table that I use to help discern all of this. Now, if you have never been exposed to chemotherapy or immunosuppression and your JC virus antibody positive and you're on Tysabri, we can use something called the optic density, which is kind of like a titer or a level to how high the JC virus antibody is. And as I'll show you on the table, there's kind of a low, medium, and high category. With this information, we can interpret the following table to figure out the risk of PML for a given individual. So let's look at that now. So what you see in the first column are months month 1 through 12, the first year, month 13 through 24, the second year, and so on and so forth, all the way up to month 72. What you see in the second, third, and fourth column are the different uh, optic densities or the index, sort of the level of the JC virus. If you're antibody negative, you can't use this table because you've never been exposed to the virus. If you're antibody positive and you haven't had chemo, you can use the table. And what you see is a level below 0.9 is considered low. A level between 0.9 and 1.5 is considered medium. And a level above 1.5 is considered high. 
So now you just need to follow the table. So let's use, for example, someone who is JC virus antibody positive. They've never had chemo and they're going to start Tysabri for the first infusion. We get a JC virus antibody test back and it comes back positive with a titer of 0.5. So we look on the table and we see that that risk is 0.001% or one thousandth of a percent. Now what does it mean to have a one thousandth of a percent risk? You take a dollar and turn it into a hundred pennies, take a penny, cut it into a thousand pieces, and one sliver is your risk. Now let's follow that same patient and presume that they have the same titer, a low titer, but they've now been on drug for a period of two years. So you look at the table for uh, 24 months and you follow it over under the low category and their risk is 0.005% or five thousandths of a percent. Again, you take a dollar into a hundred pennies, you take one penny into a thousand pieces, and now the risk has gone up from one sliver to five slivers. Let's take on the other hand the riskiest scenario. So this is again a patient who has not had chemo, they are been on Tysabri, in this case let's say for 72 months, and they have a high titer, above 1.5. So we look at the table, we find uh, the last row and go all the way over to the right, and we see that risk is 1.0, or 1%. So the, one of the points that I'm hopeful that I can convey in this video is the importance of keeping the risk, in this case of PML, in the context of the risk of the disease. The range of risk in, on this table, as you can see, goes from a thousandth of a percent all the way up to one percent, one percent total. And I think all too often patients think of a sort of yes no binary either they're gonna get PML or they're not and as you can see in the table that's not really the way this works I don't think that we should throw the baby out with the bathwater and I also don't think that it's my right or privilege as a clinician to inform you that a given risk is either acceptable or not acceptable I think it's my obligation to educate you, to show you how to interpret the risk, and then to listen to your answer. Because for you, a thousandth of a percent might not be acceptable. For another patient, a 1% risk in their mind may be laughable. One last comment is that if you have had prior immunosuppression, you can't use that optic density table. There's actually a different table to refer to. A second final comment is that you can't use this information in this table outside of Tysabri. The data is developed with Tysabri treated patients. Sometimes a well intended clinician or a concerned patient will attempt to interpret their risk say on Gelenia or the risk on Ocrevus or some other drug using this table and that simply does not work. You can't use that math. Once again, my name is Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and a like. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so by clicking that little red button, and make sure to ring the notifications bell so you don't miss any of my future content. I'm trying to put out a video once to twice a week, and I'm jumping on live streams whenever I'm able to, so until the next time I'm on the internet, this is Aaron Boster saying take care.